Hi everyone and welcome to another slow code video. Today is all about GraphQL and how to integrate with it in an OutSystems application. And this is because, unfortunately, the platform doesn't natively support this query language. But if you want to use OutSystems and have your data layer exposed with this technology, there's no reason to worry. Since the GraphQL request is, at its core, just a more complex post call, you can definitely integrate with it in OutSystems. You have two approaches for this problem. The first one is to create a .NET integration with the Integration Studio, or you can do a REST integration in Service Studio. In this video, we will focus on the latter, and to make sure that all the concepts make sense, in case this is your first encounter with GraphQL, we will first start to explore a little bit the syntax. But Feel free to skip to the second part if you are already familiar with this technology. Let's go! GraphQL provides a standardized and flexible way to structure queries and exchange data between databases and server platforms. And when you do a GraphQL call, you have three main areas. The query or mutation, where you define what you want to get or update. The variables, like search filters or data, to be inserted into the database. And the response such as the result of a query or any error messages and codes. Now we will look at these three main areas and explore some syntax fundamentals. To help us, we'll consume a free GraphQL endpoint to retrieve country information. The link to this playground will be on the video description below. You can see that this query is already built and receives the country code as its input. Then the output will be the information about the given country, like its name, capital or currency. Let's start with the query. We have prepared it already and we'll go through it line by line. In line 1, we have the keyword query, indicating that we intend to retrieve some data. If our goal was to change or insert some data into the database, we would instead use the word mutation. Moving forwards, we have to pick a name for our query. We selected get country by name. Then, since this query is for a specific country, we have the input variable country code ID. Variables are prepended with a dollar sign and you must give them a name and specify their type. In this case, the variable is called country code and is of type ID, which is defined in the schema of the GraphQL endpoint. Pay attention to the exclamation mark on ID. This means that this is an unknowable input, so you cannot leave it blank or ignore it when you perform the query. In other words, this field is mandatory. Looking now at the second line of the query, we see that we are calling a query already defined in the documentation of the GraphQL endpoint, like I've shown you in the beginning. This query is called country and receives an input called code of type ID. In our case, we'll pass in our variable country code. You might be wondering, if the country query already exists, why are we creating a new one just to call it? And there are two reasons for that. The first one is that we want the input code to be dynamic, and so we need to define a variable to pass into the query. If we only wanted the values for one country, for example Belgium, we could call the query like this. Here you can see that we are passing an explicit input. Then the second reason to create a new query is related to the response we want to get. One of the greatest things about GraphQL is that you can tailor the response to have the exact structure that you require. So it is possible to have two different queries with different names searching in the same entity and returning different structures. For example, if you allow your customers to hide or show a column in a table, it might make sense to have different queries to retrieve only the data that the customer requested. You can find this response structure in the remaining lines of the example query. Let's jump now to the variables section. A lot of the times when we are performing a query, we must pass in some inputs like search terms or the data that we want to save in the database. And all of that is passed through the variables section. In the case of our example, it looks like this. Here you can see that we have a JSON structure with a variable defined in the query called country codes ID. And it's assigned with the value PT to retrieve the data of Portugal. Finally, after performing our query, we get the response. You can see that we retrieved the information of Portugal, and if you pay close attention, you will notice that it came in a JSON structure with the same format as defined in the request. And that's GraphQL in a nutshell. Now that we have a notion of how this technology works, let's take a look under the hood to try to understand what we need to integrate with it in our systems. You might remember that in the beginning I said that uh, GraphQL is just a post call, and so let's try to find how does it look like in its REST format. 
To do so, we need to open the web inspector and then go to the network tab, find the request that we made in the playground and finally open the payload tab. As you can see, the request is composed of three simple parts. The operation name, which is a string with the name that we gave to our query, the variables that will have precisely the same values as in the GraphQL playground environment, and the query that is a string which will have the same value as your query in the GraphQL call. When doing a request in GraphQL, this three parameter structure will always be followed. So we have enough information to move on to the OutSystems world. In theory, since we already have the post request, we can simply create a REST integration in Service Studio. However, there are still a few things that we need to pay attention to to make sure that everything works and that we reduce complexity to the minimum. Looking closely at the request body, we find that the query string is full of new lines represented with the backslash n. This character is not allowed when doing a call via OutSystems and will lead to runtime errors. So when building the integration, we must make sure to remove all the unnecessary new lines and replace the structural ones with a comma. In other words, the new lines that are used to define the structure of the response need to be replaced with commas and the ones that don't have any syntax value just need to be removed. In the end, it will look like this. With the step above concluded, you can open Service Studio. In the module where you wish to consume the endpoints, you can go to the Logic tab and then right click on REST, select Consume REST API and finally select Add Single Method. In the new window, you must specify that this call is a post and then add the API URL, the request without the new lines and an example of the response. At this stage, you can also add any required authentication settings as you would do for any other REST integration. After hitting the finish button, you'll end up with something like this. As you can see, our systems built everything as expected. In our REST, we have the three parameters query, variables and operation name. Even though OutSystems sees them as parameters, we know that both the query and the operation name are constant for this call since we always want to retrieve the same result. This means that you can assign default values to them, simplifying the way to consume the method afterwards. We must use the query without the new line and set the send default value to yes. Then for the operation name, we have to put the name of the query and again set the send default value to yes. Lastly, the only thing left to do is to encapsulate this method in a server or service action to be consumed by other modules. Even though you could call it directly, we highly recommend doing this last step since it will reduce the number of inputs and will also reduce the complexity of the structures that you will expose to the outside world. Starting with the inputs, in our encapsulating action we don't need the query or the operation name, so we can simply ignore them. As for the variables, they have a structure called variable that encapsulates the value that we are interested in. In this case, since we just need the string of the country code, we can add a simple text input to our encapsulating action without the need to make it of type variable. If in your case you have a more complex structure, you can make the input of the type of the inner layer of the variable structure, thus removing one unnecessary layer that adds no value to the consumer side. Looking now at the output structure, we have the same case as we did for the variable. Since the JSON response of the GraphQL service always starts with data, the output of our method will always be of type data. This means that, as we did for the variable input structure, we can simply skip this layer in the output structure. We can, therefore, set the output of our encapsulating action to the type of the inner layer of the data structure. In our example, that would be country. Bringing all of this together, we can complete our encapsulating action. First, we drag our post method in. And then, expanding the request structure, we see that we can pass along the input variable country code. Besides this, we shouldn't do anything else, so both the query and operation name should be left empty, so that they can assume their default values. As for the response, we can do a simple assign like this. One last detail is that we need to make the structures that will be used on the consumer side 
public. After the completion of the encapsulating action, there's nothing new. You can simply consume it on a screen as you would do with any other action. You can find this example in the video description below, as well as a Medium post that has the same information as this video. And that's it, I hope this video was helpful and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below or contact us via our Twitter or OutSystems profile. See you on the next one, bye bye!